Hey aviators, let's talk about constant speed propellers. I'm going to make this so simple that by the end of it, you're going to have no question as to how a constant speed prop works and how you need to operate it. Let's first talk about why they exist in the first place. If you're familiar with a fixed pitch prop, you know that the blade angle never changes. It's set and your power directly controls the propeller and engine RPM. This means you have to sacrifice performance somewhere on the spectrum as fixed pitch props are either set to maximize climb performance, maximize cruise performance, or a compromise somewhere in the middle. However, with a constant speed prop, you get to have your cake and eat it too, which means that you can maximize climb performance while being able to cruise as fast and efficiently as possible. One common misconception is that a constant speed prop is maintaining a constant RPM with the propellers, which isn't the case. The point of a constant speed prop is to maintain a consistent engine RPM. And to do that, the propeller blade angles are constantly changing. A constant speed propeller system has four main parts, the engine, the propeller hub, the prop governor, and the prop control that's inside the cockpit. Just like a fixed pitch prop, a constant speed prop is connected directly to the engine with a shaft. But unlike a fixed pitch prop, the blade angles can change, which is done by the prop governor, which controls the flow of oil in and out of the hub. And the only purpose of the propeller control is to tell the prop governor what RPM you want the engine to maintain. We also need to understand why the blade angle changing affects the performance of the airplane. For takeoff, you want the airplane to be able to climb as fast as possible and produce the most thrust. In order to do that, we have have to have the prop at a low pitch setting which is a low angle of attack. In this case the prop is taking a smaller bite out of the air with each revolution but it can spin faster and produce more thrust. But in cruise we want to be more efficient so we change it to a high pitch setting which is directly related to the angle of attack so it's going to have a high angle of attack. When you have the prop at a high pitch setting, it's taking a bigger bite out of the air with each revolution, but with far less drag. And this is where your efficiency comes from. So remember, climb is low pitch, low angle of attack, and high drag. And for cruise, you have high pitch, high angle of attack, and low drag. The critical component in this whole system is the prop governor as it controls the oil in and out of the hub and thus the blade angle. But we need to understand what's at play aerodynamically as to why we need this prop governor in the first place and why the blade angle needs to constantly be changing. When an airplane pitches up, the prop wants to slow down and conversely when it pitches down, the prop wants to speed up. In an airplane that has a fixed pitch prop, when this happens, you have to increase the throttle when you pitch up and decrease the throttle when you pitch down to maintain a constant RPM. However, with a constant speed prop, the prop governor is doing all that for you. So let's talk about that and how it works. Let's say you want to cruise around at 2400 RPM. So you take the blue prop knob inside the cockpit and twist it out until you see 2400 RPMs on the tack. Now, when you're in straight and level cruise flight and all things are in equilibrium, you'll look like this picture where there's no oil flowing in or out of the propeller. However, once the pitch changes slightly and the prop wants to speed up or slow down, now the prop governor has to work to maintain 2400 RPM. So once you set the RPM, it puts a specific tension on the spring inside the prop governor. And these little L-shaped guys here are called flyweights. So the spring is in the center and the flyweights are outside of that and spinning around. When you pitch down and the propeller wants to speed up, just like you trying to be flung off a merry-go-round that's spinning faster, these flyweights are doing the same thing. The centrifugal force is making them want to fly towards the outside. When this happens, because of this L shape, it pushes up on the bottom bracket of the spring and compresses it. And the plate on the bottom of that spring is connected to a pilot valve. So when you push that up, it also makes the pilot valve go up, which allows the oil to flow into the hub and drive it towards a higher pitch setting. Once enough oil has gone in to where it's returned to 2400 RPMs, those flyweights come back to where they were before and allows the pilot valve to close. And just the opposite happens when you pitch up. The prop wants to slow down, the flyweights fall inwards, which pushes that plate down and thus the pilot valve down and allows oil to flow out of the hub and back to the engine. Which by the way, I know I didn't mention that before, but the oil used for the propeller hub is engine oil that's taken from the oil sump. Since the prop gets its oil from the engine, you might be wondering what happens to the prop if there's no oil. The answer is that it returns to a low pitch setting now here's why. Inside the hub is a spring that is pushing it towards a low pitch setting. And on the other side of that spring is where the oil is located. So the more oil that's in there, the more the spring is compressed, 
and the closer the prop is to a high pitch setting. So what happens when you get rid of the oil entirely? You guessed it, the spring can expand and push it to a low pitch. This is important to remember because if there's no oil in the engine, you're gonna end up with an engine failure and a prop that's at a low pitch setting and producing a high amount of drag. Because of this, you're gonna get a higher sink rate at a low pitch, so your glide ratio is gonna be much less than it would be if you could control the pitch and put it to a high pitch setting. A failure of the prop governor could also cause something like this to happen, but that's much less common. Just know that if there's no more oil, the prop is gonna to fail to a low pitch setting. But this only applies to single engine aircraft, multi-engine aircraft are different. Now I know I said that single engine airplanes fail towards a low pitch setting, but this isn't true of all single engine airplanes. Some single engine planes, such as aerobatic planes, will fail towards a high pitch setting so that they avoid an immediate overspeed in the event of a failure. So remember that the standard is for a single engine airplane to fail towards a low pitch setting, but you may receive different training on specific aircraft. Okay, so hopefully that explains how a constant speed prop works. So now let's talk about how you operate it. And as I already mentioned, you have that blue prop knob in the cockpit, which directly controls the spring tension. So during your run up with a constant speed prop, you're gonna have this additional step where you cycle the prop usually two or three times. This serves three functions. Number one is that you wanna make sure it's actually working. If the RPM isn't changing when you're trying to cycle the prop, then something is really wrong. Number two is that we want to get some nice warm fresh oil inside the hub so it's ready to work. This is just like you doing a warm up before you go work out. And number three is that we're checking for leaks. If you cycle the prop and oil sprays all over the windshield, then you know there's a leak. And not only can this cause a propeller failure, that oil is coming from the engine. So if you're leaking somewhere, you're losing oil from the engine, which obviously isn't good. The last thing we need to talk about is what you do in the cockpit in order to manipulate the performance and the engine RPM. So again, you have two controls, the throttle and the prop. The throttle is directly controlling the manifold pressure, which is the pressure that's inside the intake manifold in the engine. More throttle equals more manifold pressure equals more power. And the prop control directly controls the engine RPM. Push it in, you're gonna be a high RPM, pull it out, you're gonna be at a low RPM. One thing you may have heard about constant speed propellers and their operation is the term square or avoid being over square. And if you're not familiar, that means that your manifold pressure is matching up to your RPM. For example, 24 inches of manifold pressure is the square of 2400 RPM. The old school way of thinking and teaching was that you couldn't let the manifold pressure exceed your RPM setting and they dubbed the term over square. But this is a myth and I wanted to dispel that right now. In fact, turbocharged airplanes are designed to specifically hold a significantly higher manifold pressure than their RPM setting up to a specific altitude. So you might be taking off at 2700 RPM and 41 inches of manifold pressure and climbing at 33 or 35 inches of manifold pressure at 24 or 2500 RPM. Yet somehow this doesn't damage the engine and it's the same way for normally aspirated. In fact, it can actually be better and more fuel efficient for the engine to run slightly over square. But the most important thing is to know your airplane, know your engine, and its operating limitations. And if your CFI says you can't run over square, call them on it and ask them to show you where it says that that exists. I'll still be here waiting. I hope this simplifies and demystifies the constant speed propeller and gives you all the ground knowledge you need. I'm going to be doing more complex airplane ground training just like this in the future, so please help me out. If you like this video, click the like button down below and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss those videos.